Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The City of the Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. But first, listen to a word from our sponsor. The City of the Dead. There are 10,000 citizens in the City of the Dead, each with a white marble slab indicating each residence. The gates of the City of the Dead have long been closed to newcomers. It is a city whose population has remained unchanged for the last ten years. And the mayor of this city is Joshua Friday. Some call him caretaker of the old cemetery in the valley. But anyone who knows Joshua Friday at all calls him mayor. He is the only living person in the city of the dead. That is, unless you care to include Lammy Fink, a slow-witted fellow who does kitchen police duty and a little gardening in the city during the day and retires beyond its precincts at night. The city of the dead lies in a tiny valley 25 miles from the suburb of a great city. It is off the main highway and completely isolated from the world. But now it's 9 o'clock on a moonlit, windy night in October. Come on. Come on. Get out of that car. You heard me. What, what do you want? You want me to plug you? Oh, Jimmy, do what he says. You too, girl. Get out. You let go of me. You let that girl alone. And get out of the car. Both of you. Yeah. Now start walking. No. The other way. But that's toward the graveyard. You heard me. And don't look back or they'll pick up your bodies in the morgue wagon in the morning. Now get moving. Jimmy, what's happening to us? Keep walking. Don't look around. They, they've stolen your machine. I know it, Phyllis. I couldn't tackle two armed men. Well, of course you couldn't. You shouldn't have parked way out here in the country. But it was nice. It was so still in the moonlight. Who do you suppose they were? Probably car thieves. They didn't touch us. Jimmy. Listen. Church bell. Oh, but there aren't any churches around here. Oh, sure there is. That little old church down at the other end of the valley. Oh, but that's all falling to pieces. It hasn't been used for years. That's right. Funny, isn't it? Jimmy, I, I'm scared. Do we have to go on? Well, look, Phyllis, there's a light ahead of us. You know what it is? No. Oh, Jimmy, what's that? Quick, get off the road. Behind those bushes. Get down. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, what was that? What was... Shh, shh. Oh. oh, I wish we were home. Don't talk so loud, Phyllis. I felt acted as though we were being chased. Chased? Well, listen... Don't hear anything, do you? No. I mean, come on. Keep on the grass. Well, where are we going? You saw that light. I just remembered that the caretaker of the city of the dead lives around here somewhere. That must be his place. Oh, I, I don't like that name. What? City of the dead? Yes. The graveyard's bad enough. Well, anyway, we'll get him to let us use his phone and call the police and have a car sent out for us. Well, there, you can see the outline of the house among the trees. See it? Uh-huh. Looks awfully lonesome, doesn't it? Mm. Look, what are those? We're inside the city of the dead. Those are the tombstones glistening in the moonlight. I don't like it, Jimmy. Oh, here's the door. Oh, Jimmy, don't leave me. I'm right here in the shadow. He doesn't answer. It's funny. What do you want? Oh, I'm... Hey. No. Hey, where did you come from? What do you want? A... Uh, are you the caretaker? Supposing I am. Oh, what made you sneak up on us from behind? That you making that crazy noise. What noise? Oh, you mean the man crying? Oh, so it was you. Oh, no. No, it wasn't. He passed us down the road. He was scared. What are you doing here? Why, our car was stolen from us. Oh, stolen? Hi, Doc! Open the door! Yes, two men held us up. We want to phone to the city for help. Do you hear, Doc? They're coming, Mayor. 
Oh, here you are. Well, what have you there, man? Go on in, you two. Yes, sir. Lock up again, will you, Doc? Sure. Were they the ones picking up the rumpus? Hmm. They tell a queer story. Here, you two, sit down. Said the car was stolen, Doc. Who stole it? Well, well I don't know. Just two gunmen. Yeah. Now, here, Mayor. You better let me do the questioning. We'll get further. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, what's your name, son? James Parker, sir. And this is Miss Phyllis Carroll. Hmm. How do you do, Miss Carroll? Now, Mr. Parker, as I understand, you and Miss Carroll were out riding this evening. Uh-huh. We were parked down the road near your house. Parked? What for? <laughs> no, no, Mayor. Well, it looks suspicious to me, Doc, with all these other goings on. No, oh, you just don't understand modern young folk, Mayor. You'd better let me do the talking. Now then, you were parked on the edge of the road, I take it? Yes, sir. And then what happened? Well, two men suddenly appeared, one on each side of the car, and told us to put up our hands and get out of the car. They were armed, you say? Yeah, both of them. When we got out, they told us to keep walking in the direction of the graveyard. What's that? Oh, son, don't ever say that word again in front of the Mayor Friday. This is the city of the dead. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, just as we saw the light in the caretaker's... There's Mayor, son. Mayor. Yes, sir. Just as we saw the light in the Mayor's house, we heard someone coming down the road as hard as he could run. He was scared. Hysterical, huh? Yes, sir, he was. Crying and sobbing. Oh, Jimmy, you forgot about the bell. Bell? Yes, the church bell. It seemed to come from down at the other end of the... Gra- uh, the city of the dead. I guess it was from the old church down there. Mm, you hear that, Mayor? There ain't been no bell in them ruins for ten years, Doc. No bell? But we heard it. But I tell well, you... Never that... mind, Mayor. Now then, son, what happened after that? Well, after the man ran by, we waited a few moments, and we came to the door and knocked. That's all. No, I see. What do you make of it, Mayor? Don't like it. Think they're lying. But we're not. Listen, let me call up the police. Police? The police? Listen, I'm mayor of the city of the dead, and what I say goes. Yes, sir. And I ain't never had any police in this city, and I ain't never gonna have. And besides, there isn't any telephone here. But I saw a telephone wire. Son, you heard me say there was no telephone here. Oh, but, but I've got to let my mother know. I'm sorry, Miss Carroll. It seems to be fate. But what are we going to do? No one ever comes by this way. Well, Mayor Friday will put you up for the night, I think. He has a couple of extra rooms, eh, Mayor? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, but I've got to get home tonight. Now, now, Miss Carroll, you better just take it all as an adventure and make the best of it. Isn't that right, son? Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, maybe if we started to walk back, we could pick up a ride when we hit the main highway. No, no, no. We couldn't think of letting you do that. You simply must accept Mayor Friday's hospitality. Now, I'll tell you what. While the mayor is fixing up your rooms, I'll brew us a cup of coffee. But I don't want any coffee. Oh, tut, tut. Of course you do. Yeah, there's still a fire in the kitchen stove. And the kettle's almost to a boil. We'll have coffee in a jiffy. But I want to go home. Don't say any more, Phyllis. Jimmy, what does it mean? I don't know. Something's up. I don't get it, but we better play up to him. Pretend like you thought nothing was a matter. Well, are, are we prisoners? Well, it looks like it. Now, don't worry, though. I can take on these two old duffers if I have to. Well, but who is this, this dark person? Oh, sh- here he comes. Now yeah, then, coffee's all ready. Yeah. Hey, there you are, Miss Carroll. Thank you. Yeah, and there you are, Mr. Parker. Oh, thank you, sir. And here's some buns. Uh, better if they're hot, but they'll do for this sort of a snack. No, thank you. I, I'll just have coffee. Sir, I thought that Mr. Uh, Mayor Friday lived here alone. <laughs> you wonder who I am, eh? Well, I'm what your city doctors would call an old codger, I'm afraid. Just an old country doctor. Doc Tuner is what they call me. I wouldn't think they'd need a, a physician in the city of the dead. Oh, no, no, the city of the dead isn't my seat of practice. That is, I should say, it wasn't my seat of practice. You see, son, I'm retired now. All my patients are dead. Dead? All of them? Well, it's this way, young folks. I was a family doctor and had my little practice and was like a member of each family that I doctored. I knew all the little troubles and every pain of each of my patients. Never seemed to hanker to add new patients to my clientele. Especially as I grew older. Uh, more coffee, Miss Carroll? It does taste good. Well, as time went on, I found myself laying more and more of my patients to rest in the city of the dead. But there hasn't been anyone buried in the city of the dead for the last you know, ten years. Well, this was years ago, son. Well, finally, about ten years ago, I discovered that all the families I'd doctored were either dead or had moved away. 
As that I hadn't added any new patients, I was a doctor without a practice. But couldn't you have got more? Oh, suppose I could, but I never made a practice of it, so I didn't hanker to begin trying at my age. I was getting well along, and besides, I had enough to live on. Oh, I see. <laughs> Which means that you don't see it all. Well, son, as I said, I lost the last of my patients about the time they closed the City of the Dead as a burying place and opened up a newfangled cemetery over on the other side of the city. My last patient just slipped in under the bars, you might say. Last person to be buried here. All your your patients are buried in this great uh, city of the dead? Every one of them. So you can see the city of the dead has a very soft place in my heart. I often come down here and stay a spell with the mayor. It's kind of like being with old friends. Going down there among those little white headstones brings back all the old days to me. And you just happen to be here on a visit tonight? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, here comes the mayor. Well, your room's just ready. Yeah, that's good. I suppose, Miss Carroll, you'd better take the first room. Mr. Parker, you take the one right next to it. Is that right, ma'am? Don't make no difference. Well, good night. I hope you both sleep well. I'll call you for breakfast. Uh, good night, Dr. Tuner. And you too, Mr. Uh, Mayor Friday. Good night, son. And you, Miss Carroll. Yes. Good night. Good night, Phil. Remember, I'm right next door. Night, Jim. And now you, son. Yeah. Hi. Hi out there. Hey, what do you mean by locking the door? Oh, Phyllis. Phyllis. You mean is that you? Yes, Phyllis. They've locked me in and the window's barred. Out of the night come two youngsters. Into the web of intrigue woven by two strange old characters they fall. Prisoners of Doc Tuner and Mayor Friday. Just who are. But before we go into that, a word from our sponsor. Having locked Jimmy Parker and Phyllis Carroll in adjoining bedrooms in the caretaker's cottage, old Doc Tuner and Mayor Friday are out among the gravestones investigating. Well, look here, Mayor. We won't be able to find anything down here among the graves this time of night. Yeah, moon's good. Anyway, I know ever sticking stone in the city of the dead. I'll know if anybody's been prowling around. But morning will do just as well. No, it won't. I'm going to look, and if I catch anybody prowling around, well, I got my gun. But if the men got away, as those youngsters said... Both me ain't telling the truth. All that nonsense about hearing a church bell. Well, the girl was telling the truth, Mayor. I know the truth when I hear it. Dang funny. Ain't no church bells within 20 miles of here. I tell you, Doc, I'm just going to raise old Ned if I catch anybody bothering any of my citizens. They come to the city of the dead to rest, and I'm going to see that they get it. You no, know, of course, Mayor, but what gets me is why anyone should want to rob a 10-year-old grave and let... Fine joke, Mayor. Huh? Well, never mind now. This is going to take some thinking over. I'll tell you when we get back to the house. Look, look yonder at the wisp of fog among the stones. Yeah, yeah, them's the first bits of fog sweeping down the valley. Another couple of hours and the whole city will be so thick you can cut yourself a hunk. Hmm. Strange how I love this old place. Those wisps of fog remind me of rays, nice friendly phantoms. <laughs> Reckon you have the same feel about this place as me. Oh, listen. Hmm, there, there's your church bell. But there ain't any bell, I tell you. I seen them take it out of the tower ten years back when they quit using it. Yeah, maybe your ears are deceiving you, but personally, I hear church bells. Yeah, these are the fellow the creeps, don't it? Yeah, it seems to me there are altogether too many mysterious things happening in the city of the dead, if you get what I mean. I don't. Well, for a city of quiet, decent folk that are supposed to be at their last resting place, there's a beastly lot of nocturnal activity. Hmm. Listen. Bell stopped. Say, I got a thought, Mayor. Yeah? Why don't you put old Lammy Fink to keep a lookout at night? If he saw a prowler... If he saw a prowler, he'd have a fit. Hmm. Lammy Fink. That addle brain wouldn't stay in the city of the dead after dark for anything on earth. Well, to be honest about it, Mayor, it looks to me like the kids are telling the truth. In the morning, we'd better feed them and send them on their way. And have them go home and tell a long rigmarole about auto bandits and hysterical men and phantom church bells and us locking them up for the night? Well, you can't keep them locked up indefinitely. Better turn them loose before any more harm's done. Mighty funny they should show up right at this time. Looks queer to me. Somebody's been monkeying around in the city of the dead for the last week. Then we up and catch a couple. Don't seem natural to me that they should be innocent. 
Well, and then I lied to him about the telephone. That's something else for him to talk about. Guy shake stock. If they went to the police with all that, the city of the dead would be run over with police and thrill hunters for weeks. I ain't gonna have it. What's this? Look here. Man's cap. Yes, it's a cap, all right. Recognize it? Uh, yes. You don't say, man. Yes. Belongs to Lammy Fink. Hmm, don't tell much. Might have left it here yesterday while he was working. No, he didn't. I was by this way after he left last night. Wasn't here then. And anyway, he was he was working down at the other end of the city. And again, I seen him when he left after work. And he had it on his head then. <laughs> Well, those are three pretty definite reasons to make us believe that Lammy Fink isn't so afraid of the City of the Dead after dark as you thought. Mm. Likewise, it rather indicates that Lammy was down here tonight. I know Lammy. He wasn't down here. Not if he could help it, he wasn't. You're a stubborn fellow, Mayor. You deny their church bells even when you hear them. Now you intimate that a man's cap has arrived on the scene without reason or assistance. Well, things ain't like they should be, Doc. Something's the matter. Somebody's desecrating the City of the Dead. Well, the thing to do is to question Lammy tomorrow. Shh, wait, listen. Hmm, church bell again. Say, hey, I'm beginning to think you're right about investigating that old church. I'll go down with you tomorrow. I ain't gonna wait till tomorrow. I'm going down there now. Oh, come now, Mayor. It's getting foggier in the deuce. You won't be able to see anything. Going anyway. If there's anything there, I'll see it. Oh, what's the use of chasing phantom church bells this time of night? Don't come if you don't want to. I'm going. Well, if you're going, I might as well go, too. <laughs> You ain't fidgety at your age, are you, Doc? Who, me? Blamed old fool, come on. Can't see a blame thing. Got a flashlight, Doc. I always carry one. Mm, dilapidated old ruin. Should have been torn down long ago. Come on. I'll lead. And look out where you step. Every board's full of rottenness. Floor's liable to collapse and let you through. I ought to know that. Been in here often enough. Hey. What in tunk is that? Oh, nothing. Nothing but the rafters creaking. Can't you feel the whole building sway when the wind blows? It's that old. Mm, and the whole shebang's likely to crash down on us. Don't reckon so. Keep quiet. What the deuce for? You don't expect to run anything into anything here, do you? Most folks have better sense than to risk their neck in this kind of a place. If a bell rung, somebody rung it. But you said there wasn't any bell. Mm -hmm. Last time I was in here is when we buried old man Burton. It was more than ten years back. You remember old man Burton, Mayor? Yeah. Yeah? Walked down this very aisle behind his coffin. <laughs> Oh, Lord Almighty, Mayor. Uh, just a screech owl, Doc. That's the blamedest noise. Shh, hold it. I told you we should have waited until morning. Ah, uh, it ain't nothing. Come on. Where are you going now? We're going to climb up this here ladder into the belfry. No, we're not. I am. Like as not, one of the rungs will give way and you'll break your neck. I'm going to chance it. Well, yeah, then let me go first. No. This share's my funeral. You be careful, Mayor. Listen to those rung squeaks under your weight. Yeah. Yeah, they'll hold, I guess. Are you coming? Yes, of course. Hold that light down here so I can see what I'm doing. All right. Right behind you. All right, Doc. You wait for me at the top of the ladder. Yeah. If anything doing, I might as well be in on it. Yeah. <sighs> All right, Doc. Yeah, except for a bad case of goose pimples. Now, I, I'm going to turn on the flashlight. Better crouch down in case there should be anything. I'm crouched. Mm -hmm. Look out! Look out! Huh? What's the matter? Didn't you see it? See what? Whatever made that noise. <laughs> Them was pigeons. Scared the pie out of them. But I saw a shape, shadows. Yeah, just a pigeon flying around. I don't believe it. I saw something big. Oh, yeah, where is it then? Couldn't have gone down the ladder. Couldn't have jumped out of the belfry without busting its neck. Yeah, have your own way. Anyway, there isn't any bell up here. Exactly like I told you. So, you see, we had all this monkey business for nothing. You satisfied now? I heard a bell tonight. Of course you did. So did I. Where, where did it come from? 
Ain't no other buildings around for 20 miles. Yeah, looks to me like you've deepened your mystery rather than solved it. Yeah. Look, look. Cobwebs all over the place. Ain't nobody else been up here for years. Anybody can tell that. Hey, Mayor, let's go back to the house to do our cogitating. I'm not what you'd call comfortable perched up here in this old belfry. Yeah, reckon we might as well go down. Yeah. 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 Glad that's over. I'd make a blamed poor monkey at my age. Come along. Now, where do you think you're going? Well, as long as I'm here, might as well look over the whole place. Mm, you're sure anxious to break a leg. You feel how springy these floorboards are? I'll be able to give away any minute. We'll take a look behind the altar. Yeah, what's back there? Yeah, it used to be the preacher's study. It was never used, though, after the old bell ringer committed suicide in there. By the old Mayor, I'd forgotten about that. Old Sammy Martin hanged himself, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, locked the study off and never used it after that. Of course I remember now. Fifteen years ago, if it was a day. It ain't locked no more, I don't reckon. Look here, Mayor, I, I'm not so certain I like this. Like what? Well, we've got a dead bell ringer. Yeah? No, we've got a phantom bell. You think there's any connection? No. You? I hope not. Who ever heard of a doctor being scared of ghosts? Mm, I don't recollect saying anything about being frightened. I'm just putting two and two together. Mayor! Mayor! Uh, Where are you? Where's the light? Uh, are you hurt? Oh, oh. No, I'm... I'm all right. I just broke through the floor and... Uh, mm, hurt? Uh, Have you got the light? No. No, I just... The skin machine blast this rotten place. But the light... Uh, here, here it is. I hung on to it. <laughs> My soul, what was that? Come from the study, didn't it? Yes, sounded so. Shh. Oh, that, that's only... That's only the rafters. Here, here, help me pull my leg out of this danged hole. Uh, wait a minute until I turn on the light. No, 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 leave it off. You sneak up on the study. What do you mean, sneak up? Here, give me your hand. There you are. Now, look here, Mayor. I've had enough for one night. I'm going to see what made that noise. No fat chance of sneaking up on anything after the crash you made when you fell. We'll sneak up to the door and throw it open. Yeah, and get shot for our trouble. No, no, we won't. We'll be lying flat on the floor. Oh, yeah. Yes. Then we'll wriggle into the room. Now, listen, I'm no snake. Then we'll wait until we hear a noise. You're crazy, Mayor. Yes, maybe so. Anyway, as soon as we hear a noise, we'll flash on the light and nab whoever's there. Hmm, just as easy as that. Come on now. Don't make a sound. Here's the door. Lie down flat. Right in front of the door? Yes. It swings in. I'm right alongside you. Well, who's going to open the door? I am. I've unlatched it. All I got to do is give it a push. Well, push. <laughs> what? Ow! Huh? Oh, great jumping seizure. What? What was that, Doc? Oh, I don't know, but whatever it was, it ran the full length of me. Stepped on you? Stepped on me and dang near ground me into the floor. Stepped smack on my head. Are you hurt? Well, I don't feel any too good. Can you walk? Oh, of course. Yeah, well, our ghost oh. seems to have gotten away. Turn on the light. Let's get into the room and look around. Yeah, I could do us some light. There. Mayor, I haven't told you the worst yet. Huh? The worst? Yet? Yes, the worst. Mayor, whoever it was that ran over me didn't have shoes on. Look where his nails scratched my face. Oh! Gosh, you're mighty, Doc. Wasn't it a man? Well, I tell you, he was barefooted if it was. Gee, Rushi. It'd take claws to make scratches like that. Here, here, tie your face up with this, this handkerchief. It's bleeding. Mm, I hope you're satisfied. Now, just a minute, just a minute. I want to look around this study. Give me the flashlight. No limit to your curiosity. There it is again. Whatever it is, it's hanging about outside. Look. Look there, Doc. It's a bell rope. Bell rope? Yes, see it? That claw-footed man or whatever it is has been ringing the bell for me in here. Look. Look where it disappears through the ceiling. Hmm, it's a new rope. 
Hey, Mayor, what, what are you doing? I'm going to ring that dang bell. Now, you want to prove to yourself that there is a bell, huh? Yeah, of course there's a bell. I always knew there was. Well, go ahead. Pull it. My face hurts. I'll give it a yank that'll pull the whole contraption down. Well, pull. Pull. Yeah, here goes. <laughs> oh, Mayor! Oh. Mayor! He shot. It wasn't a bell. It was a trap. You have just heard the opening episode of The City of the Dead, especially written and produced for your sponsor by Carlton E. Morse. What is this clawfoot thing? What is the meaning of the phantom church bell? Why are Jimmy and Phyllis held prisoners? And finally, who shot Mayor Friday? And how and why? The mystery grows deeper and creepier next week with Chapter 2 entitled, I've Dug Up Something Ghastly. Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The City of the Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like big adventure, come with me. If you like stealth and intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. But first, our sponsor. The City of the Dead. Midnight in October. A night when almost anything is liable to happen. And much already has. Old Joshua Friday, mayor of the City of the Dead, otherwise known as the caretaker of the old cemetery no longer in use, had just been mysteriously shot. The shooting took place when Mayor Friday pulled a bell rope in the little church ruins at the lower end of the City of the Dead. Old Dr. Tuner and the mayor had been led to the abandoned ruins in their search for the phantom toll of a church bell. They found no bell, just a bell rope. And when the mayor pulled it, he was shot. And now, back in the mayor's cottage at the other end of the City of the Dead. Earlier in the evening, Dr. Tuner and the mayor had locked up young Jimmy Parker and the girl, Phyllis Carroll, who had stopped there for aid when their parked car had been stolen from them by gunmen. But that was nine o'clock. It's midnight now, and Doc Tuner had carried the unconscious body of his friend from the old church back to the caretaker's cottage. Is... is he dead? Of course not. You think I'd lug a dead body through a cemetery at midnight? How badly is he hurt? Oh, I reckon it's just a scalp wound. Who shot him? I wish I knew, Miss Carroll. I reckon I'll do a bit of telephoning. But you told us you didn't have a phone. Did I now? You most certainly did. Yeah, guess that's just one of those things. But look here. Now, Parker, keep your shirt on. Just sit still and listen while I take care of things. Oh, so that's where you keep the phone. Yep. Long distance, please. Mm Uh-huh. Long distance? Uh, Listen, Central, will you get me Skyline 2020? Who is it you're calling? You know in good time. But... Hello? Hello, Captain Friday's office? Yeah, well, is Captain Friday in? Good. H- Hello, Captain? Uh, say, this is Dr. Tuner. Yeah, Doc Tuner. No, nothing much. Say, I- I'm down with your father in the city of the dead. Yeah. Now, listen, Captain, something's happened to the mayor. No, no, it's not his heart. He's been shot. No, he ain't gonna die just to clip on the head. Yeah, I tell you, if it's serious. But look here, boy. There's something wrong down here. Something wrong, I say. Yeah. Could you come down for a week? Yeah, keep your mouth shut and come down. Good, that's the ticket. Be sure you don't talk. Yeah. Goodbye. Has Mayor Friday got a son? Yeah, Captain Friday, private investigator. Owns his own agency up in the city. And he's coming down here? He is, and he'll want to talk to you, too. When is he coming down? A couple hours. But why can't we call the city? Not until you talk to the captain. (gasps) Dr. Tuner! 
What on earth is that on your back? My back? Yes. There's a footprint on your coat. You don't say. Here, I'll take my coat off. What kind of a thing made that? Hmm. The same thing that scratched my face. Jiminy Crickets, what a footprint. Did someone knock you down and walk on you? Looks like it. Mm -hmm. Who ever heard of a barefooted man running around at midnight in a cemetery? Did he scratch you with his hands? No, with his claws. A man with claws? Well, look at this footprint. That's a human foot, all right, and the toes aren't claws at the end of his toes. Oh. Well, did you see him? I did not. I felt him plenty, though. Yeah, did he shoot the mayor? Well, I reckon the story will keep until the captain gets here. Hello, that's the mayor. Well, is he coming, too? No, I reckon not. Good sign, though. Oh, I want to get away from this place. Doctor, how long are you going to keep us here? Well, it depends, Miss Carroll. It depends. Would you rather spend your time here or up at the city in jail? Jail? What kind of talk's that? What have we done to be sent to jail? That remains to be seen. We'll just sit right here and wait. Two o'clock. Oh, dear. There he is. That'll be him. Hello, Doc. Hi, Captain Friday. You made a quick trip. One of the traffic boys brought me down on his motorcycle. How's Dad? Just as I told you, not in the slightest danger. Still unconscious, though. Uh, this is Miss Phyllis Carroll and James Parker. Oh, yeah. How do you do? Company, eh? Well, in a way, maybe. Not company? What then? Out here. Supposing you sit down and hear the whole story. There's a deuce of a lot of nonsense going on out here. Fire away, but first you're sure the old man's okay. Yes, the wound is hardly a scratch. Just grazed him, huh? Mm. Okay. Go ahead with your story. Well, in the first place, there have been indications of marauders in the City of the Dead for the last three nights. Yeah? Footsteps on the gravel. Footprints the next morning. Once the mayor was certain, he saw one down among the graves. Mm Mm-hmm. And then tonight, well, we heard a scream that had raised the dead, and then someone ran by the house sobbing as though scared out of his wits. Man? Hmm, sounded so. The mayor slipped outside, and pretty soon he shouted to me to open the door, and he brought these two youngsters in. Well, well. And they swear they didn't make the noise. Did either of them look as though they'd been frightened? Mm, no, just nervous. They said they'd just been held up by two gunmen and their car taken away from them. Better and better. What next? Well, after they were held up and were walking toward the cottage here, they say this frightened man that the mayor and I heard ran past them. Did you get a good look at him? No, we got off the road and we heard him coming. No. Yeah. Too bad. And then they claimed to have come directly to the house here. They wanted to telephone the police in the city. And Dr. Tuna said there wasn't a phone in the house. What was that for, Doc? Uh, uh, Let's pass over that for the moment. Uh Uh-huh. Go on. Well, uh, Mayor and I took it into our hands to uh, detain these two young people. Locked them up? Well, yes, in a way. High-handed business. Well, how do we know but what they're grave robbers? Oh. Ever rob a grave, Miss Carroll? No, sir. You, Parker? Do I look like a grave robber? There you are, Doc. Looks like you and Dad pulled a boner. Mm -hmm. Now then, what happened? Oh, yes, I almost forgot about the phantom church bell. Don't tell me you got a ghost mixed up in this. Well, these youngsters came in with the story of hearing a bell ringing down at the other end of the city of the dead. Down in the old church? Yes, but the mayor said there wasn't any bell there. This is beginning to have possibilities. Well, after we locked up these two, we went out to look around, and I'll be a son of a gun if we didn't hear a bell. Well, Captain, your dad's sort of impetuous at times. <laughs> Thanks after his son. I bet your money he dragged you down to the old church. He did. First up in the balcony, and then back to the old study behind the altar. Isn't that where that old fellow, what's his name, hanged himself? Yes, it is. Well, as we were creeping up on the room, the most ghastly moan you ever laid ear to came out of the study. Ah, a ghost. I was ready to come home by then, but the mayor insisted that we'd had something cornered and we ought to capture it. So he laid down on her stomachs and wiggled up to the study door. It was darker than the inside of a pirate's heart. And we were lying directly in front of the door, and the mayor shoved it open. And out popped the ghost. I wish it had been a ghost. Look how it ripped my face with his claws. Oh, that's how you got scratched up. It ran the full length of me, wailing fit to curl your hair. You don't say. It ran out of the building, and the mayor and I jumped to our feet, and your dad switched on his flashlight, and the study was empty. Naturally. But there was a new bell rope hanging through the ceiling. The bell? That's just what your dad thought. He gave the rope a yank, and someone shot him. Huh? But did the bell ring? I, it, blame if I know. I was so rattled, I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't wait. I grabbed the mayor up on my shoulder and didn't look back till I got home. Amazing. Offhand, how do you think Dad was shot? 
There are no windows in the study, as I remember. No, there ain't. And I'll swear there wasn't anyone in that room but us. Could anyone have shot from the door? No, it had swung shut. And besides, the mayor had his back to the door, and he was shot from the front. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Um, tell me more about this animal that gave you the trouncing. Here, here, look at that footprint on my coat. Does that look like animal to you? No. Barefoot man, what do you know? And look at those claws. I don't believe it, Doc. Mm, that footprint and these scratches are all the proof I want. Then I'm supposed to find a barefoot man with claws, a phantom church bell, a hysterical man, not to mention two auto thieves. More than that, I'm supposed to find out why two law-abiding citizens, one of them my own father, have practically kidnapped a perfectly respectable boy and girl. Mm -hmm. I reckon you'd be just as well off not to look into that bank or very close. Uh, oh, yeah, and there was something else. You know the mayor's got a sort of a half-wit gardener working for him. Oh, Lammy Fink? Mm. Is he figuring on this, too? Well, we found his cap down among the tombstones as we were going down to the church. Here it is. The mayor said he saw Lammy wear it home from work last evening, and it looks to me like Lammy was back in the City of the Dead last night. No, not Lammy. He's scared to death of this cemetery after dark. Mm, that's what your dad said, Captain. Now, well, that's the truth. I know Lammy. He wouldn't come near the place after sunset. Well, yeah, then explain the hat. Give me time, Doc. Give me time. I haven't been here a half hour yet. Look here, you two talk and talk. Aren't you going to let us call the city? Well, what about it, Doc? Going to let our young friends depart in peace now? No, look here, Captain Friday. We can't do that. I, I want to talk to you alone for a spell. All right, Doc, if you're ready to talk. Uh, you don't mind if Dr. Tuner and I adjourn to the kitchen for a little chat, do you? Come on, Doc. It's like this, kids. Dr. Tuner has thrown new light on this business. Uh, suppose you tell me, Mr. Parker, who you are, what you do. I'm a student at the University of California, junior year. I see. Living with your parents? No, I have a room in a small hotel. What hotel? In Britain. Would you be missed if you didn't show up for, say, a week? Why, well, I, I suppose so. I see. What about you, Miss Carroll? I don't work anywhere. Live at home? With my mother. What's your address? The Brundell Apartments on Jackson Street. Any phone? Franklin, 7076. But, but you aren't going to keep us here, are you? Tell me this, Mr. Parker. How did you happen to come down to the City of the Dead tonight? Just driving. No ulterior motive. I mean, besides the moon and the girl. No. Well, look here, you two. You seem to have gotten yourselves into a mess. But no. Yes, wittingly or unwittingly. Now then, you have a choice. Either you remain here for a week and submit to being locked up nights and having a guard at all other times, or else I'll have to take you back to the city and have you locked up. We haven't done anything. Oh, that's to be proven. I can't have the police hold you for investigation. Well, I don't understand it. I don't know what it's all about. You can't do this to us. Nevertheless, it's happening. Now then, which shall it be? I, I don't know what to say. I want to go home. Well, that's impossible at the moment, Miss Carroll. If you chose to stay here, I'll make it right with your mother. Likewise with your hotel party. Oh, Jimmy. We could get I'm... out on bail. Not on a held for investigation charge, you couldn't. Believe me, I'd advise you to stay. Jail's a rotten place to spend time. Oh, yes. Oh, please, let's stay here, Jimmy. All right. We'll stay. Good. I'll run up to the city in the morning. Probably get back tomorrow afternoon about five. You, you're going to the city to, to check up on Jimmy and me? Is there any harm in that? No. No, I guess not. That's fine. You two wait here a minute. I want a word with Dr. Coon. Oh, Jimmy, darling, what have we got ourselves into? Well, get hold of yourself. I knew we shouldn't have come. I knew it all the time. Then the youngsters, Phyllis and Jimmy Parker, aren't so innocent of the night activities as they're pretending. What will Captain Friday have to report when he returns from the city? But first, our sponsor.
Dr. Tuner, back again. Well, back from the city already? Quick trip, Captain Friday. Yep, sitting pretty. Oh, hello, Miss Carroll. Didn't see you and Jimmy. Did you see my mother? I did the first thing this morning when I got to the city. I left her not the least bit worried. But how did you explain? Don't give it a thought. Just settle down and have a good time while you're here. How's the mayor, Doc? Yeah, he came too just after you left this morning. He was feeling so rotten. I gave him a mild powder. Still sleeping. Did you tell him you brought me down here? Yeah. What did he say? You no, know, he growled a little bit, but he's really tickled. He was. <laughs> Old son of a gun. Say, Doc, what time are you going to give us some dinner? Oh, in about an hour, if Miss Carroll here will give me a hand. Why, of course I will. Well, that'll give Parker and me a little time to look about. Like to come along with me, Parker? Why, sure. Good. We'll take a run down among the tombstones. See you later, Doc. It's been a long time since I had a good look at the city of the dead. Oh, that's all? Mm-hmm. Here, let's cut across this way. Where are we going? I want to look over the ground where the mayor and Dr. Tuner picked up Lammy Fink's cap last night. Did Lammy show up for work this morning? I guess not. I heard the mayor and Dr. Tuner talking about it when the mayor came, too. Doc promised to go over to Lammy's cabin and see what was the matter. Did he go? I suppose that's where he went. Anyway, he locked Phyllis and me up about noon and was away for a couple of hours. Yeah. Be careful where you walk and let me know if you find any footprints. Not that you're likely to find any on this graph. Captain Friday, what's it all about? Why are you keeping us here like this? Answer me one question, Parker, and perhaps I can answer both of yours. Well, I will if I can. What were you and Miss Carroll actually doing here at the City of the Dead last night? I told you. See, there you are. You won't play square with me. How can you expect me to be on the up and up with you? But I tell you, it was just an accident that brought us here last night. And I tell you, I think you're lying. Look, just because you're a private detective... Now, now, Parker, don't get nasty. If you don't want to talk, it's all right with me. I'll find out for myself eventually. In the meantime, our relationship can be pleasant or strained. However you want it. You won't find anything out about me. You took the trouble to look me up while you were in town. I did take the trouble. Well? I found you just what you purported yourself to be. A junior at the University of California. Likewise, Miss Carroll told the truth. Well, doesn't that satisfy you? Under ordinary conditions, I'd be willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. These are extraordinary circumstances. In what way? That remains to be seen. Oh, just a minute, here we are. Dr. Tuna said they found the cap just a little to the left of old Lady Gregory's grave. If I remember, that would be right over there. You mean you know every one of these 10,000 graves by heart? Well, not all of them. I got a pretty good idea of the lay of the land here. You see, when I was a kid, this was my playground. What a curious childhood. Yeah, that's the grave, all right. Now then, supposing we do a little looking around. Exactly what do you expect to find? I don't know. Look here. If Lammy Fink was here among the graves after dark last night for some diabolical reason... And believe me, it would take the devil and a legion of his assistants to get him here. There must have been a reason for him leaving his cap behind. And you expect to find out what took him away in such a hurry that he didn't have time to stop for his cap? No, it would help. Say, don't you suppose the fellow that ran by us sobbing was Lammy, do you? I've been wondering if it couldn't have been. Since I heard about this cap business. Sounds like something Lammy would do. Found anything? No, sir. Do you? Yep. Rather what I expected to find. What? Well, what was it? I, I don't see anything. You don't, huh? Come on, I've come on. I've come to see. Let's get back to the cottage. Doc will be having supper for us by the time we get in and cleaned up. But what was it you saw, Captain Fry? You'll find out soon enough, Parker. Don't push me. I'm not much for going off before I'm primed and loaded. I promise you this much, however... This is going to be the biggest night this cemetery's had in a lot of years. Now that you've had your supper, Mayor, don't you think you'd better turn in? You look sort of peaked. Yeah, not on your life. I ain't going to spend much time in bed from now on until I catch the fellow that shot me. Well, that's what I'm down here for, Dad. I'll catch my own gunman, young fellow. Yeah, you probably will at that. Now, but look, 
Now that we're all gathered around in one big family, yeah. what do you say to a little intimate chat? Uh, about what, particularly, Captain? Well, for instance, what about Lammy Fink? Nothing. What does that mean? I said there was nothing about him. He wasn't home. You mean he's moved out? No, he just wasn't around. Clothes, food, and the likes were all there. Oh. Well, that's something. Maybe Lammy was down in the City of the Dead last night, after all. Eh, I don't believe it. Been down to the old church yet, son? No, not yet, Mayor. Trip to the city took most of the day. Did have a look around the place where you folks picked up Lammy's cap, though. Find anything? I did. Yeah, you did? What did you find, boy? Before I tell you, I want to ask Miss Carroll a question. You mind, Miss Carroll? What? Why, of course not. Good. What would you expect to find if you opened the grave? Why do you say that? Why do you look at me like that? Say, what are you trying to do? Suppose you keep out of this, Parker. An asinine question if I ever heard one. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to answer the question yourself. Uh, sure. Offhand, I'd say a corpse. Mm -hmm. Not a half bad guess. Somebody evidently wasn't quite so certain. Look here, Captain. What are you getting at? That's what I say. Somebody evidently wasn't quite certain just what one does keep in a grave. Uh, what do you mean? Somebody opened one down in the City of the Dead last night. Opened a grave? What? Robbing a grave in my city? Buy it under Dad, Dad, take it easy. You know anything about it, Miss Carroll? Why, no. No, of course not. Anything to say, Parker? Do I look like a grave robber? Besides, how do you know a grave was opened? So where the turf had been carefully cut about the edges and then replaced. It was old Ernie Morton's grave, Doc. Ernie Morton's grave, eh? Think of that, Mary. Think of anyone wanting to disturb poor old Ernie Morton's bone. I'll have somebody's hide for this. Thought we'd go down this evening and see whether the ghouls carried Ernie away with them. the grave. Yep, yeah, this is the one, Mayor. Strip off your coat, Parker. You and I are going in for a little heavy exercise. I'm to help dig? That's the idea. Hey, see here, the sod's all loose. We'll lift it off first, and then it can be replaced. Ah, the ghouls who did this knew their business. That's a neat job, huh, Dad? Oh, excuse me, Tom. Oh, no, keep out of your way. It is a neat job at that, eh, Mayor? Yeah, too neat. If you take an expert to cut up the sod as perfectly as this and replace it in this manner... Know anyone who could do it besides yourself, Dan? Any landscape gardener could do it. Here, Parker, pile a sod like this so we can fit it back together when we get through. Could Lammy Fink do it? Lammy? Why, of course he could. Yeah. So I thought. But, but look here, son. You can't make me believe Lammy'd come down here and open a grave himself. Hey, listen to that, Captain. Church bell, all right. Yeah. Coming from down toward the old church, too. Looks like I'm going to have to take a run through the ruins tomorrow. Yeah, go through in the daytime. No godly man would ever go in there at night. The mayor and I know, don't you, Mayor? Yeah. Now, enough of the heavy work, Parker. Here's a shovel. You work at this end, and I'll work at the head for a while. When we get down a foot or two, we'll have to work in relays. There won't be room for us both. I'm not used to this sort of thing. You're not, huh? What about those blisters on your fingers and the palms of your hands? Blisters? Certainly. You don't suppose I'd overlook your hands, do you? Well, I didn't get them digging up bodies. Looks to me as if they were made by a shovel. Suppose they were. Well? Why don't they stop ringing that bell? Getting on your nerves? Yes, it is. What about those blisters? Well... I'm working my way through college, if you must know. So? Got a job gardening. What's the use of lying? It'll only make it worse for you. I'm not lying. Uh, here, rest a moment. Get your breath. Yeah? You're making good headway. Down about a foot and a half already. Yeah, the dirt's still loose. It's easy to you. Yeah, don't you want me to take a hand at shoveling? No, Doc. You'd creak under the weight of a shovel full of dirt. Mm, thanks for nothing. <laughs> You know, it's been 20 years since we laid Ernie away. Do you remember it, Mayor? Yeah. It was storming to beat the deuce. 
There wasn't anyone present except you and me and the two grave diggers and the fellow that drove the hearse. Yeah, yeah, Doc, I remember. One of the grave diggers had to keep bailing out the grave until we could get Ernie into it. Did you help bury all of your patients, Dr. Tumor? Every last one of them. Sort of a little courtesy, if you get what I mean. I saw them through life, saw them safely tucked away in the ground, and now I sort of watch over them while they sleep. Now, go to it, Parker. If you got your breath, you take a shift down in the hole, and then I'll follow you. Yeah, sure, but... But... Well? Well, suppose I dig into something. That'd be awful. Well, suppose you do. Sing out, and we'll walk them down and take a look. I don't like it. Good full moon tonight. Yeah. I never stood around on one foot in the graveyard at night before. It does give a fellow the creeps, don't it? Get into Molly Grubble? Mm -hmm. You begin to see things. Bless my soul, did you hear that? That's it. That's it, son. What do you mean? It's the claw-footed man. Claw-footed man? Huh? I don't see anything. There. Over there. There's something white moving. <laughs> it disappeared. Oh. Listen. Captain Friday. Captain Friday. What is it? What's the matter, Parker? I've dug up something ghastly. His dead arm is reaching up to me. You have just heard the second episode of The City of the Dead. Written and produced by Carlton E. Morse. What was it that Jimmy Parker uncovered in the grave? What was the phantom at which Captain Friday shot? What will the old church ruins reveal by daylight? Come with us next week when you will hear the third episode entitled The Body That Walked Off. <laughs>